Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to talk to you about things that are happening in and around uh, Missoula and beyond. Um, I got a new dub and stuff for you guys, an old noir film. I also got some um, uh, pre-critic where I pre-judge a movie based on absolutely nothing. I also got some city council. Uh, it was the State of the Community Address uh, put on by the uh, Chamber of Commerce here in the city of Missoula. So we'll have a little bit of that along with your city council report. So let's jump right in. Some uh, top news happening this morning. The Pentagon had uh, a leaker they didn't notice until just over a week ago exposing the Ukraine war on all sides showing the involvement in the U.S. is more than just the supplier of weapons. U.S. believes that any offensive Ukraine might have is not strong enough to push back on the Russians, and U.S. has strong ties to Russian intelligence, exposing U.S. secrets at the highest levels in within the within the Kremlin. They also expose the fact that Egypt might, might have been uh, interested in selling rockets to uh, Russia over this uh, campaign. Uh, other countries outside of the U.S. are skeptical and wary of sending weapons to Ukraine, which includes South Korea. Even the U.N. is uh, being spied on by U.S. because they seem to have been making excuses for Russia during this time as well. There's some of the cliff notes um, kind of exposing that, and that was got from the BBC News. And overall, there was 300-page documents got uh, stripped from the internet in the campaign to find and suppress the leaker, to which they announced they have the man in custody as of this morning. So. Uh, Jack Texera, 21, was arrested by heavily armed tech, uh, tactical agents on Thursday following a week-long criminal investigation into the disclosure of highly sensitive government records. He used the social media platform Discord to share the last uh, to share these documents uh, last fall, mind you. Uh, but recently, those files were seen, and all hands on deck were. Uh, his position was National Guard and was tasked with laying down fiber optic cables, to which the Pentagon believed how Jack was able to get some of those documents, but of course this is all allegedly going on right now. Under the username OG, the leaker used Discord, which is basically like the social media platform that you can customize and bring your friends. It's kind of like uh, you, you make your own clubhouse in a social media venue and you invite your friends it's, and it's invite only. So anyways, the 21 year old has been taken in custody to see and we'll see what happens next. The, it's ongoing. I can't talk about too many of the details because I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so far, they have the uh, person, uh, a person in custody, and we'll see how this uh, turns out. So, uh, another uh, some sad news this week as well. Uh, former Nazi prosecutor, lifetime advocate for peace and justice for victims of the Holocaust, for more than uh, 50, 60 years, uh, has died at the uh, ripe old age of 103. Been uh, friends. Uh, joined the Newmerg prosecution. They were basically tasked with uh, prosecuting uh, Nazis. So this was one of those very political show trials that they showed on, on television and they showed during this time and they showed a lot of reels of this. So they hired the young 25-year-old lawyer to collect evidence of war crimes and crimes against humanity the, during the Nazi occupation and overall prosecution of Jews and dissenters alike. Many of the details from the crimes committed from uh, concentration camps left a mark on friends uh, that haunted him until his death. Uh, he, see, he said the evidence was so uh, visible and mass graves gave him more than enough to take two days to present evidence th that soon after 24 Nazis were prosecuted and then executed. He spent many years after that, the Holocaust, trying to create humanitarian laws and cross the border justice systems to bring justice for war crimes to prevent anyone willing to start another war in the future. He spoke against the Ukraine war and wanted to find peace as soon as it was possible for people and not for some chunk of land that we will see new generations of people from all over regardless of national origin. So he spoke uh, to the industrial military complex and how Republican President Eisenhower left the world with a dire warning of building up arms. Uh, peace isn't ain't, ain't easy and sometimes fighting for peace is hard when violence is has been too easy for so many for so long. So in an interview with uh, one of the last uh, interviews he's done through uh, CNN, he spoke about the Ukraine war. He, he left the interview uh, saying, never give up, never give up, never give up on peace. S and speaking of ever give, uh, given up, uh, NPR, PBS, looks like a lot of those uh, organizations are actually leaving Twitter as Elon Musk uh, appeared on a BBC interview and basically said that um, NPR is state-run media and um, journalism and the overall state of news being delivered in the world today. Twitter being a social media platform allowed for reporters and citizen journal journalists to thrive and spread information, good and bad. Um, as of now, NPR has asked all staff to get their social media Twitter accounts in order as the two-week grace period. I mean, I hate to say NPR uh, staffer get fired over tweeting, 
but we might as well be seeing that in the next coming months. Also, PBS is also moving away from this as well. Twitter revenue for information has come under fire after Elon took it over and decided to pretty much uh, fire most of the people and even his own company, Tesla, wanted him to pull out with about 80% of the commercial businesses reassessed their future with the new Twitter. So love it or leave it. But with the journalist cuts off the informational stream, they are building a blind spot that could take a toll on NPR of way of getting clicks for more stories. The federal government funds PBS and shows like NewsHour, while they may might be state funded, uh, which clearly a lot of them are, NPR is funded partially by many sources from Facebook to US government, but mostly donor based and the model right might be for independent news sources to thrive. But then again, it kind of reminds me of the whole uh, sponsored by Pfizer thing kind of going off and uh, sponsored all sorts of different organizations. So the additional money goes towards, uh, you know, um, just kind of like breaking it down about how like cable news even gets money too, is like, you know, cable franchise fees, you know, what, whatever people pay for charter cable, spectrum cable, whatever cable company has a carrier for like CNN, Fox News, and MSNBC, a big chunk of the money that your subscriptions go to already go pay for their salaries. Sure, they have a lot of big sets and a lot of money that already are put into there, but they already have that um, mainstay backup of subscription-based stuff, much like how most of my job is getting paid for through subscriptions and cable subscriptions moving forward. Just a kind of like a little thing, uh, uh, you know, it may not be like, there's always some kind of involvement within the state regardless of whether it's uh, like solely state funded, but there is definitely some state funding going into a lot of these organizations. Um, of course, you know, as we jump right in, um, you know, just kind of like talking uh, about some of the um, upcoming bills and the upcoming things in, the, uh, in um, the state of Montana. One of the things that are happening in Missoula is that they're doing a ballot initiative. They're asking the voters here in the city of Missoula for more money to go towards MCPS teachers. So uh, MCPS is looking for voters for more funding regardless, uh, regarding utilities, curriculum materials, and teacher salaries. Um, the spokesperson, Tyler uh, Christensen, said that the rise in salaries is important to uh, remain competitive for teachers' retention and recruitment. And that is a big thing, too, because um, uh, one of the big, uh, another big uh, push for uh, more funding for teachers is also happening in Bonner. So I covered the Bonner Community Council, and one of the big pushes where they're trying to get the people of Bonner to vote in favor of uh, a bill to uh, pay the teachers more because currently the teachers in Bonner Milltown community, uh, Bonner Milltown is getting paid roughly $13 an hour and the guy basically spoke very frankly about how people get, get paid more by working at Wendy's but they want to be able to make it more uh, competitive and be able to retain a lot of the teachers that have worked many years and went to college for just to get paid minimum wage according to the national standards of wages right now. So the elections um, are mail-in uh, ballot only. Ballots have been sent out. I just got my ballot in. Uh, the ML the, so here's some of the brass tax stuff. So for MCPS, the elementary, uh, the elementary uh, district levy request is $3.5 million, increasing property taxes on home worth 100,000 by $6.48 per year. The high school building reserve request is $4.9 million increase in property taxes on home worth 100,000 by about $3.61 per year. And the general fund levy request for the elementary school is $261,000, which will increase the property taxes on home worth uh, $100,000 by $2.58 per year. The general fund levy request for high, high schools is 128, which is 69 cents per year on houses that are assessed at $100,000. And you know, it's Missoula. Like, I, I, I don't know if there's any house that is l assessed less than $100,000. Doesn't seem reasonable. <laughs> but at the same time, Bonner, our Eastern neighbor, are also looking to pass this, uh, like I said before. Uh, so th so th this isn't the first time Bonner trustees and Edmund haven't asked for money uh, to no avail. And they will want to generate about 43000 dollars a year to be able to accomplish their uh, raise from $13 an hour to $18 an hour. So uh, this story isn't any different from the other schools that are not part of the greater Missoula County Public Schools. And of course, as a kid who went to Hellgate Elementary, uh, the size and scope of students coming to that school will force the district to grow or restrict enrollment. I mean, I'm not implying that um, most of these schools do not restrict enrollment. They do not turn a lot of these kids away. That's a, what that a, lot, a lot of their goal is to try to get as many kids in there as possible and make sure that everyone has a well-rounded education. That is their main goal. But at the same time, th with the whole Millen, Mullen Build Project, all those new houses being built ne next to Hellgate Elementary, there's also the uh, 
the demand for more space for a lot more teachers and then a lot more services to provide for your students in education. So, and those are the, some of the schools that are actually inside the district of the MCPS. There's a little bit deeper in some of Missoula County schools from which, yes, a lot of MCPS schools have gotten a lot of money put into their, uh, um, their systems as well. Um, I mean, all these new buildings, all the new things that, uh, all the new additions were basically voted in back in 2014 and have been kind of coming to fruition as we've been uh, transitioning with the new Jeanette Rankin School. But I digress. These, in these times, many public infrastructures are becoming harder and harder to support since the only time you hear about schools is when there is a shooting or something about gender affirming drama. Anyways, let's. <laughs> Let me take off the tinfoil hat and speak frankly. Not so many people who live in smaller communities tend to support their local schools. And Missoula has seen growing support over the years, and these upcoming ballots are due by May 2nd. They were mailed in April, you know, they were already mailed this week. If you haven't already got them, you can go to the uh, elections office at the corner of uh, Russell and Wyoming, just across from Home Resource. So those are some of the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Um, up next, I have a tease for our, uh, uh, our new show, Music in Missoula. <laughs> from the rehearsal hall uh, is that because Dean had been talking about fully retiring, fully retiring, fully retiring. Us old people, uh, we retire, but the, one of the cool things about uh, having taught music, still teaching music, but officially as, a, as paying the rent, when we retired from public school teaching that unlike our, say for example, our colleagues that taught math, God bless him, I can't imagine the horrors of teaching math. kids is Gary Gillette and music in Missoula or better yet musicians in Missoula and look who's back with me my buddy Dean Peterson uh, and uh, instead of everything about his life which was really nice if you missed that one hey go back get on your computer and, and get back on MCAT and stream that because it's a, a lovely conversation so we'll just have a little bit of, of background information on who Dean is and, uh, and, and was and uh, then we'll take a look forward to the uh, Missoula Symphony Orchestra and Chorale performance coming up here shortly, of which you'll be able to see some snippets from rehearsal uh, interrupting our chat, hopefully, because that would be a lot more musical than be going on. Hey, give us a little bit. Dean, for the folks that don't know who, who you are, who are you, buddy? Well, I'm... A man in a smart sweater. That's I what am... <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my Birkenstocks. <laughs> uh, I've got oh. mine. I've got mine. The shop getting resold for the spring. Well, I'm a I'm a local musician in Missoula. Been here since the '70s. Um, came here for college and never left. And uh, I taught public school for 33 years, and I was 25 years as the choral conductor at Hellgate High School. That was a really wonderful job. Um, along with that, I, I took on the Missoula Symphony Chorale, which is one of the reasons I'm here today. And I've also conducted, until just very recently, the Missoula Mendelssohn Club. Um, so I've uh, been really active in music all, all the way along here in town. was always a major part of the International Choral Festival, which, by the way, is coming back this summer in July. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's time for summer in Montana, and why wait when MCAT is offering summer kids programs for the months of July and August? For three weeks, we will bring back our stop animation camps for kids getting used to production and video editing, followed by our horror camp for more advanced filmmakers. But that's not all. I wonder how long he's gonna keep us waiting. Yeah, he just keeps staring out that window. Through these camps, kids will learn how to create stories and bring them to life and make lasting friendships along the way. Let's go! Log on to MCAT.org to sign up or call us at 542-MCAT. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this week. It is time for Pre-Critic, where I judge a movie based on absolutely nothing but maybe the trailer. Uh, kicking things off, it's Renfield. It's kind of like Seinfeld, except George is Dracula and Renfield is basically Seinfeld. Enjoy the public domain Dracula character in all his uh, free rights glory as they follow his beta male servant to become his own man against supernatural odds and normal boss to employ 1% reflection on how powerful people abuse their power at the expense of others. Anyways, let's ignore the deeper meaning and laugh at as Renfield becomes the anti-hero with superpowers that only uh, a walking corpse like Renfield it has in terms of vampire powers by adjacent. I don't know. Apparently he has powers. There's a lot of blood. I didn't know that Robert Kirkman uh, actually was the, uh, the, the brainchild behind this, but if it's Robert Kirkman, you can expect a lot of blood because he did The Walking Dead and that show, Invincible, that's on Amazon. But we're all this. Nicolas Cage is Dracula. Probably should have led that um, with that one because like horror fans, uh, there's always people who are Cage fans who are kind of crazy about him now. So put him in a Marvel movie and then I'll fix your Mar Marvel movie problems. Up next, we got Suzumi, anime, anime, anime. We're back with uh, the director of Your Name and movies like Weathering With You follows the simple formula of a teen girl who falls for a guy in a love against all the odds and supernatural events force them to work together only to be separated for a couple of years and then they come back and be like, hey, don't I love you? It's like, yeah, you do. Boom, that's the movie. You can skip it. Um, then we got Tony Collette um, as they basically imagine a, a Karen who has some Italian ties goes back to Italy to see some legacy, legacy money. Um, see where we're going with this? Um, the movie's called Mafia Mama, and she basically becomes a mafia leader of family because family, family. Anyways, watch this suburban housewife become a baddie in this comedy about all mafia tropes that they know wh what they're doing, basically. Should we whack them? No, but I'll give them a stern talking to. Oh no, bigger bad guy wants to take all my family's business and leg legacy. Bang, bang, I actually learned the mafia way. Q Abba song, uh, Mamma Mia. And uh, next we got a couple movies that are coming out that, and we're gonna do a speed round so I'm gonna talk really fast. The only addiction to these movies is about scorn women dating her ex's rival because a well-lived life isn't always the best revenge and, th and this one's a nice way to watch people spiral into a dramatized movie about boxing. Um, then we have a nefarious when a son of Sam type of guy claims evil made him do it. This story gets told in this could be Telling the truth, or is he simply lying? Watch this movie that will make you think that demons exist outside of the human heart. Then we got One True Lovers. People move on when they think you're dead, uh, but now watch a movie where the people who they th th thought they're dead comes back and they're just like, oh no, drama. Uh, that's your movie right there. We got Sweetwater. It's almost like they think people want to watch these sports movies anymore. Watch when ESPN made 30 for 30, those documentaries, basically narration is on point, but enjoy a movie about the very first black man to work to play with the NBA. Um, next one, we have a movie come, uh, called From Black. Um, anyways, it's mostly about a woman who's haunted by a demon in the form of her kid's untimely death and has to make even more evil choices to find out the truth, blah, 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 yada, 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 horror movies. Anyways, those are the movies that are coming out this weekend, most of which you probably won't see. Some, you might just be like, oh, is this on streaming? Oh, oh, oh great, I might watch it, who cares? But anyways, those are the movies that are coming out this weekend. Um, here's a uh, redubbed movie for you guys. It's from Tomorrow Is Forever from 1945. Excuse me, sir, can I take your coat? Are you the valet? Uh, sure, let's go with that. Excuse me, hold on a second. Just gonna take a little time walking down these stairs. I'm coming. Don't worry. I'm on my way. Just enjoy the journey. Well, maybe don't enjoy it that much. Uh? Oh! Hmm. -hmm. Well, hello there. Hey, you two guys. I see that you're awkwardly meeting. My name is, uh, Aubrey Charm. I was invited by Michael. Well, Michael's a close friend of mine. Oh, wonderful. I'll be on my way. Okay, good day. And one quick look down there. Okay, I would ask that you 
do not make me publicly speak at a venue that's a personal home. I work ah, in call. Oh, you're going to be great. Come on now. Well, I can't stand for too long. Oh, don't worry. We have our own stage built into this giant mansion. Uh, did you really have to build a stage for me? After all, I'm only just uh, touring through the town and talking about, you know, things and stuff. Well, the host likes you, therefore I like you. Do you have any idea what my talk is even about? Well, uh, all I know is that I'm supposed to receive you and you're supposed to talk in front of a large group of people. Oh, hey, could you, uh, help with this guy? He's really, uh, laying into me about his talk. May I present to you the Madam of the House, Aubrey uh, the Third. Oh, it well, is very see, nice to meet you. You no longer need Good day me. to you, sir. So, you haven't come at a moment too soon, and I really appreciate you. Have any food you would like. We'll be starting the talk in about an hour or so. <laughs> oh, please. Mmm, that's pretty good. Little salty, but pretty darn good after all. Please, please, go to the kitchen, add more salt. Uh, so I told the guy, yeah, you have to do some public speaking, am I right? Why doing this? Oh, yeah, so I told him, <laughs> he has to make him publicly speak in front of everyone, whether he likes it or not. All right, see you guys. Oh, please, have a seat. Oh, uh, were you, uh, happened to be talking about me after all? Oh, <laughs> nonsense. It's some other jerk. I've been so intrigued by you since I've been reading about you in the newspapers. Like... Could you tell me a little bit more about some of the topics that you're going to be talking well, about in your presentation frankly, today? I don't really have much to say, except for, you know, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> you hear that? Uh, he, he wants to thank us for inviting hmm. him here. <laughs> what do you mean by thank you? You're just some run-of-the-mill famous person who is just driving through town, and we wanted to pay to have you here, like socialized gathering. So you don't want to hear about my obscure Lego collection? Car, okay, mind. I'll be with you in a second. I must apologize. I can't show up to your thing. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council. And uh, just a word to the wise, uh, city council was really short. It was about half an hour long, so I uh, supplemented some of the uh, city club um, episode that we did, which will be, which is currently airing. Um, MCAT started covering some Bonner Mill Town Community Council. I might speak a little bit about this, but not too much. Missoula uh, Chamber of Commerce hosted their monthly meeting, City Club, and it was the annual State of the Community event, which basically had guests like Mayor Jordan Hess, President of the University of Montana, Seth Bodner, and uh, County Representative, uh, County Commissioner Josh Slotnick, Josh Slotnick to uh, speak uh, to the heavy hitters uh, of, of Missoula in this unforgettable luncheon. Jill Valley, long-running KPAX News anchor, uh, spoke uh, about uh, what people uh, expected and uh, kind of some of the questions that uh, people may have about the state of the community. So this is Jill Valley. It's exciting to take a look at the state of our community for this year because so many things are happening and so many things are changing. And, you know, this is a, a community that loses its mind over Chick-fil-A but then still feels really sad about the businesses that we have lost. And I think now it's not a big deal to see Kevin Costner downtown Missoula, but we also worry about what kind of uh, impression we're giving on the world that everybody wants to live here. You know, there's so many of us that are clinging to, you know, the Missoula of the old, quieter, smaller, slower, versus uh, what we're facing. Have you seen our downtown lately? It's vibrant and fantastic. and. So many things are happening, but it's always hard to find that balance between um, what was and what could be. But we live in a community where I can send a mean email to the mayor about a subdivision near my house, and he's going to answer me back. We can have that great conversation, and I really appreciate that about our leaders. Okay, so uh, that was uh, Jill Valley talking a little bit about that. And so the next couple of videos, we're going to be talking with, uh, uh, we're going to have a couple of talking heads. We're going to have the three heavy hitters that I was talking about, talking about some of the things that are happening within the community, kicking things off with Seth, Bothner, uh, Seth Bodner, uh, president of the University of Montana. You know, one of the, the I, I would argue, perhaps the most worrisome challenge facing higher ed right now, though, and, and it's not unique to uh, to us, but but is and that's the, the national decline in uh, students who are attending college. Um, uh, in fact, the the proportion of high school graduates who are enrolling in college directly out of high school 
has dropped seven full percentage points since just 2016. Um, now, thankfully, we're bucking that trend at UM. Uh, enrollment is growing at UM despite the national decline, so that's a good thing, but, but we all should be concerned um, when we talk about challenges. We should be concerned about the, the numerous polls that, uh, that show us that, that public confidence in higher ed has been eroding for almost a decade, and we're seeing that flow through in enrollment right now. And Median home price in Missoula was 144% of a median home price nationally. It's probably, could be even more now. The last piece of this in change that's so important to me is what's happened with our tourist economy. Last year, we had 3.5 million tourists visit Missoula County. We have 120,000 residents. That's from the Institute for Tourism and Recreation Research. 3.5 million tourists, 120,000 residents. And they stayed for nearly a week. And this is a great thing. They poured millions and millions into our local economy, tons of jobs. This is definitely part of who we are. And please don't mistake what I'm saying, about to say is not anti-tourism, it's pro-tax reform. When those 3.5 million folks are here for nearly a week, they use our services. They park in our parking. <laughs> exactly. We pay for that. We pay for all those services. And it's no accident that they're here for nearly a week. It's not just that we're partway between Yellowstone and Glacier. It's because this place is really wonderful for all the reasons everybody here could r rattle off. And a bunch of those things happened not by accident, but because we paid for them. And we've got. Uh We've got people in crisis, again, throughout, throughout the country, throughout the West, throughout Missoula. People experiencing mental health crises, people experiencing addiction crises, people that are unable to have their basic immediate needs met. So that's the operating environment that we're in. And that is, um, that is the challenge that we are, those are the challenges that we need to deal with at all levels of government. Um, but in challenges, we grow. And in challenges, um, as Missoulians, we come together. And as Missoulians, when we, have a, when we have a challenge in front of us, we plant a flag and we determine what kind of community we want to be, and we work hard to, to be that community. Yep, so yeah, I mean, those are the kind of like the bigger pressing problems that are happening and impacting our greater Missoula area. Not just Missoula, but it seems to be pretty common with the, a lot of the national issues that are going on in the United States as well. You know, retention and trying to keep and uh, lure more students to go to the university is important, but a lot of people don't feel like uh, they're being motivated to actually go to the university because in a lot of ways they don't feel financially secure ap after leaving the University of Montana. So uh, not necessarily University of Montana, but just universities in general. And then going back to Josh Slotnick, who's been really uh, ringing the bell on uh, offering a t uh, having a, an attachment to a tourist tax. And essentially, he wanted to uh, basically put maybe a dollar extra, a couple dollars onto a person's hotel stay per night and just uh, and also maybe uh, additional costs to rental cars. But other than that, doesn't want to do uh, things that would generally impact the general public of Missoula, but able to uh, spend that kind of money so we can have extra police and fire department and services, not only for our community, but also the uh, visiting community in mass. So, uh, and, and another thing, you know, um, one of the biggest things that the city is tackling is trying to make sure, you know, the mental health crisis unit, you know, they, w w you know we, I was gonna talk a little bit more about it during public safety and health, but they basically just uh, kind of, uh, um, talked a little bit about the budgeting and not to exceed $130,000 a year uh, going towards uh, the mental health crisis and those services provided for them. So I'll talk, I uh, basically just kind of gave you the overview of that one. And so those are the kind of the many things that are happening in our community. Um, each member spoke in length about the problems and solutions of a lot of their dilemmas, but it, it did come down to inflation and the dollar towards these programs. Josh Lautner County brought up tourist, the tourism tax. Uh, Mayor uh, Hess gets asked about those um, in the region of getting out of college and wanting to stay in Missoula with a decent paying job. And so he, he takes the first uh, uh, stab at it. So there's this donut hole between, this missing middle really, between 80% and 140% of very immediate income. And it is, it's, uh, it's young professionals, it's nurses, it's, it's firefighters, it's teachers, it's service workers, it's a wide range of people in our community that are priced out. So a lot of what we're doing is focusing on, on building supply and going back to Jill's question about, about the, 
density, one of the ways to do that is to reduce the land cost. And you can do that by putting more units on, um, on uh, the same amount of land. Um, and so townhomes and um, condos are a great opportunity. Those are things that we can encourage that will um, provide more affordable ownership opportunities. We're also working on this, I mentioned it in my remarks, but we're working on this um, community land trust development on, on the north side off Scott Street. And that's a format where you can buy the home and you have a long-term lease on the land and there's, um, it's income qualified. So the, the home is subsidized essentially through the city's contribution of the land. Okay, so that's a, one of the big pushes that the city has been interested in doing. You know, the Scott Street, Scott Street project was a big part of the land trust. And like you said, is like the, the, the government would technically lease the land to you to very little cost to help people with certain uh, mary, uh, area income. So basically the city buys and owns the lands to a certain degree to lower the cost of future owners to pay the property and not so much the land under it. Whether or not this is a good program is something that we'll have to grow into before long. And this uh, is just one of the many ways Missoula is trying to keep up with keeping housing costs low. Josh Lonick, uh, county official, talks about equity meant to make sure that everyone gets equal access to services in our community, and he's uh, talking a little bit more about that. Really, the mission of our, our organization is to deliver services to the residents of Missoula County. How do we make sure that those are delivered equitably, and how do we make sure our organization is run equitably as well? So to that end, we did hire a person, and then we are also engaged right now with the city in the creation of a JEDI advisory board that will, bo will function between the city and the county, and their job will be to bring policy recommendations to us so we move forward on these issues. And I have to say, I'm really excited about it, and this is stepping into the unknown and a little bit into the uncomfortable. I know we're going to stumble and get words wrong and do things wrong and then have to step back and do it right again, but I'm super proud we're attempting. We're so, so overdue for this. You know, we've Gent, the greater we have lived in one sort of way for a few hundred years. We're just beginning to try and alter that, and it's going to be a bumpy ride. Okay. And so that was uh, Josh Slotnick on that point. Um, do, 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 uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, we are a university town, and then I want to end on um, Seth Bodner talks about how the university impacts our community, and this is what he has to say. I didn't mention it here, but many of you might have heard that uh, this past fall, I don't pay much attention to college rankings in general. They're, they're kind of baloney. Uh, I could talk for 20 minutes about that. But one ranking that, that did pop onto my radar was by Washington Monthly um, that identified the University of Montana as the number one university in the country for community and national service. And. And that's because of all of you, right? Our students are engaged. Some of you might know that we went through a, a rebranding process at the university and, and just better articulate who we are. And one of the best uh, quotes as we were talking to this communications firm about our wonderful community, uh, one person in our little focus group, she, she said it so well. Uh, she said, you know, Missoula is the place where apathy goes to die. All right, so those are, that was a nice ending for uh, the uh, State of the Community address. You can watch the entire City Club uh, presents a State of the Community online at MCAT's Facebook and YouTube pages, respectfully. Uh, not much was on the agenda, about seven items on their consent agenda for your general city council meeting. Um, they have some uh, legacy from the founders of Missoula take, uh, that spoke about uh, Francis Warden from his great-granddaughter, uh, Myra Schultz, and she has talks about uh, the acquisition of one of their uh, family's old state piano, which is going to be uh, living in the Florence Hotel from now on. I am so pleased that Thomas Taylor has agreed to provide a home for this beautiful piano that the music school, the piano people at the music school are so excited about because I don't know that we have any other square grants in Missoula. Thomas is going to host a party on the 14th from 4 to 6.30. The town is coming. The music uh, community is coming. The uh, historical community is coming. We'd love to have all of you. Mike told me that there was some glitch with the invitation that came out. So this is my invitation to you to please come 
and celebrate this with us. Thank you. Okay, and so that'll be uh, actually tonight. So you guys can check that out. They're going to be uh, per performing, I believe, in the Florence building from four to six thirty. Double check um, on this as well. But yeah, it's a it's a it's a big news story. Just some legacy of an old piano basically being restored and kept pristine for future generations. So we also have some uh, future other stuff as well. Uh, Francis Lyman Warden was a co-founder of the city of Missoula along with Christopher uh, P. Higgins in 1865. Florence Hotel will hold on to the legacy piano that once belonged to Francis Warden. Uh, Jessica Miller, and we're going to be talking until about the legislation session, which uh, slowed down because of Easter weekend, and they talked, uh, and here is Jessica Miller talking a little bit more about the legislature. Senate Bill 206, which would have um, exempted a certain cell phone use from local ordinances. So um, essentially, um, our, our, our cell phone ordinance would have been difficult or, or impossible to enforce. That one was tabled in committee. Senate Bill 511, which would have revised um, government entity limitations on property tax increases. That one actually failed on third reading, um, so that one died. House Bill 825, um, providing funding to address affordable housing. Uh, that one unfortunately failed second reading. Um, I think that there are some efforts to still get some affordable housing into some of the other bills, but I'm not sure how well those efforts are going at the moment. Okay, so uh, let's go back to my notes real quick. A couple of bills that would affect local elections for uh, even years were tabled and other related won't affect upcoming elections until 2024. Of those, uh, some of, of those, some of those passes, some major, uh, some minor amendments through bills not but nothing noteworthy since it was a short week in the government. So far, any amendments to revenue and the state budget is due by the end of April. And so that means like, you know, they have the revenue already all set in place, but they have until about two weeks from now to uh, decide whether or not they want to amend and add or take anything out of the, uh, uh, basically the budget for the state of Montana. So Mayor Jordan Hess, uh, during uh, comments from the mayor, spoke about a lockdown that happened at Hellgate High School. So this is what, uh, yeah, to say. There is nothing more terrifying than, than a threat um, like that in our community. And I want to acknowledge um, the, the trauma and um, the anxiety that, think that an incident like that causes in our community. And I want to um, thank, acknowledge um, all of the law enforcement entities, all of the, um, all of the school employees, uh, everyone that came together to ensure that uh, that our uh, students remain safe in um, under the threat of, of um, something truly horrific. Um, our law enforcement trains and trains and trains for situations and critical incidents like this that we hope we will never see in our community. And threats like these cut close to the bone when they do happen in our community. Yeah. So, you know, I, uh, I work with uh, kids now and again, and we have some uh, uh, um, kids from the MPS school. I knew a kid who uh, actually goes to Hellgate and talked about this a little bit. You know, from their perspective, it wasn't, it was a, uh, it felt like a general lockdown. They got out and everything was fine. Uh, and then there's some other uh, communities, some other schools in town. I'm not going to mention any of them by name or anything like that. But it seems like swatting has been a new trend where uh, people have, like some kids have been calling in to force a lockdown uh, uh, disrupt to disrupt regular school. You know, I could speak more on this topic since I did cover uh, uh, Bonner School as they are looking to get more funding from their community to pay their teachers more than $13 an hour and retain their teachers. But anyways, before I get on my high horse, most of these meetings and more are available on uh, at MCAT.org or our YouTube channel, um, MCAT TV Missoula. Uh, you know, the city council meetings are also available on ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a great source for a lot of people looking to see what's kind of like what's going on with the city of Missoula. So those are kind of the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. There is a lot, always a lot more details I didn't get into, but I'm just giving you kind of the cliff notes on kind of like uh, some of the um, things that are happening within the city. So let's jump right into some uh, um, events that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for, you know, what you guys are going to plan on doing. This is about, about the future. We're talked about what already happened this week, but let's talk about some things that are going to be happening 
uh, within this weekend as well. So here are all the events that are happening here at the Public Library. If you're interested in doing some 3D printing, scanning lasers, um, makerspace walk-in hours starting at 9 9.30 a.m. this morning. They do it every Friday. They have a lot of open hours on the weekends. They're starting to open a little bit more up with more open hour walk-in hours type stuff. So definitely take advantage of that, um, even if you want to send a tailor over at the makerspace uh, 3D design that they can be printed for you. And the only thing it costs is for the raw materials. So uh, story time and tiny tales are every Friday at 10.30 a.m. Um, it's a great opportunity for a lot of kids to learn some reading and story time and just a uh, good exposure to books. Uh, Yarns and Watercolor at uh, 12 noon every uh, Friday all, all year long. It is an uh, opportunity for people to uh, improve their uh, painting, watercolor skills, and then Yarns, which is in the Blackfoot Room, all on the fourth floor, um, is all about stitching, crocheting, and just building up your uh, scarf for, uh, the, for the next winter. So Lego Club is also happening Friday at 2.30 p.m. this afternoon. They usually do it. These are pretty much ongoing events that happen every week. Young, adar uh, young Adults Writers Group happening every uh, Friday at 3.30 p.m. Improve your writing skills, uh, uh, future lit majors, that kind of thing. Worldwide Cinema, the movie they're featuring is 200 Meters, which is a, a featuring a, a Forbidden love, uh, Palestinian lovers separated by a, a wall built by the Israelis. Um, Saturday um, um, uh, at the library, Tech Connect. Uh, so Tech Connect is a opportunity for uh, learn them computers, but bring in the devices you wish to know better and they can help you. Um, this is uh, computers aren't something you learn by uh, people talking at you, but you have to interact with it. Uh, this event happens most Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. in the third floor, uh, one of their conference rooms. So. You can pop in. It's uh, most Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. Western Montana Genealogical S uh, Society Workday. This is kind of like a uh, workshop for people who just want to jump right in, do some genealogical project uh, in the gathering. Genealogists will be there working on their projects, and they can lend you a hand. Um, it's every third Saturday of the month. Um, MCAT Saturday drop-ins at 1 p.m. Also, we have our dance party at 11 a.m. every single Saturday for a bunch of kids. Our Saturday drop-ins are a great way for kids to do uh, Saturday uh, to do uh, stop animation, editing, all sorts of fun things like that. Uh, First Reads, Annie Jump, and the Library of Heaven. Uh, Missoula Public Library is proud to host the Montana Repertory Theater for First Reads, a four-part stage reading series featuring local actors reading four contemporary plays. The rep is considering for full production stage reading. Let us test these stories in the community before sets, costumes, and any of their theatrical of elements are added. And this is happening at the library on Saturday at 2 p.m. And of course, makerspace walk-in hours every Saturday at 2.30 uh, p.m. Special activities at the UM Living Lab starting at 4 p.m. along with MCAT's um, VR experience is every Saturday at 4 p.m. Um, okay, so kicking things off also, Sundays, uh, YMCA Yoga at the library, it's at 1 p.m. Makerspace walk-in hours at 2.30 p.m. on Sunday. So uh, here are some of the regular events that are happening outside the library. Starting at 10 a.m., um, Missoula Food Bank Meal Distribution is a wonderful opportunity for people to get in some um, cheap and nutritious food within our community. It's a food bank. It's open to all walks of life, whether you have low income or high income, and you're looking to save a little scratch on the food bill. Uh, family fun time at the YMCA, Mismo Gymnastics and Ruchaka Sports Center, pretty much 10 to 11 good uh, kind of big thick area of just a lot of indoor fun for a lot of kids. Wedding fair, if you bring your boyfriend to this, he'll almost have to ask you to marry him. So anyways, with over 30 local vendors, raffles, photo booths, food trucks, cocktails, and more, all sorts of different things at the wedding fair. It's going to be at the Red Barn on Saturday at noon. Adults, uh, it's all, uh, it's, yeah, it's happening today at noon, but it's also happening tomorrow at noon as well. So there you go. Adult Night at Hearts of Fire, Pottery and Art Studio, 5 p.m. Pot Sketch, it's a at the Clay Studio and Pottery Date Night at 6 p.m. Martin of the Iron Butterfly is gonna be at uh, uh, Music, playing at Ten Spoon Winery. Three Milk Mike and One Dog Holly is gonna be at uh, some playing some folk music at, at Imagination Brewing Company. Starry Night at Lake Paint Night, it's 7 p.m. Painting with at a Twist. Painting with a Twist, Clementine was right. Live at Monks is going to be playing some folk music at Monks starting at 7 p.m. Sports of Nature, it's going to be theater at Zach, a human look at the subjects of AI, human uh, um, um, obsolete. Oh, sorry. Anyways, it's about AI, human. Um, oh, man, that's 
I can I can say the word, but when I read the word, I can't say it. it Isn't that weird? But anyways, it's the basically high. Um, it's the hybridization of oh God, hybridization of humans and computers. It's it's basically we get implanted with a chip and we basically become quasi robot cyborgs, and it's basically a stage play that reflects that. It's original. All right, and that's basically going to wrap up your Friday events. Uh, Saturday, if you're interested in doing some markets and such before they go outside, uh, they still have the winter markets over at the Orchard Homes, and they also have it at the Southgate Mall from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Buttercup Run, if you're interested in doing a, a nice 5K, 10K, uh, half a marathon run, Arley High School is starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Beehive Building Workshop, Missoula Urban Demonstration Project. Hey, you ever wanted to do a beehive? MUD does a bunch of these classes, and this is one of their focuses on this weekend at 12 noon on Saturday, this community bridging workshops where participants will collaborate to build their hive while also learning to uh, fundamentals to build their own. If you're interested in building your own beehive simultaneous with the, with the instructor, you're welcome to bring your own materials. Um, you can sign up by going to the uh, MUD's website. So, Rustic Barn Owl Paint Class, Painting uh, with a Twist is doing a painting class at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Um, Hands-on science, wildfire science at Spectrum on the second floor of the public library at 2 p.m. Stroming Bird Vegavon um, is going to be folk and um, at uh, Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m. on Saturday. Aaron Jennings is going to be uh, playing at DraftWorks Brewing Company. Acoustic music, live music with Jesse the Olicott. Um Electric at Cranky Sam Public House. You got Free Cycles is doing a rock music um, show starting at 7 p.m. Arrowleaf album anniversary show with ESP. Uh, Missoula Symphony Orchestra and Chorale, War and Peace. This is a two-day special uh, with a Saturday show at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday show at 3 p.m. Dean Peterson on last Friday's um, um, Music in Missoula episode with Gary Gillette. I showed you a little bit tease in the beginning of the episode if you're watching. Uh, Missoula Folklore Society Contra Dance is going to be at Missoula Senior Center every Saturday at 8 p.m. Replay, the West Side Theater, is doing a, uh, their hurrah. It's their 12th anniversary year. They're celebrating the choreography and artistic vision of the BB uh, Bear Bay Dance Executive Director and Founder Joy French uh, brings in best of collection of back to stage performance of the uh, company and alumni uh, company dancers. So this is kind of like a cabaret show of their best shows at the West Side Theater at 8 p.m. on Saturday night. If you're interested in doing some karaoke, West Side Lanes is doing karaoke every Saturday at 9 and also Chris Moon is doing some DJ uh, Badlander Club club stuff every Saturday at 10 p.m. So those are your events and more happening within the city of Missoula. There's always a bunch of other things happening in the city of Missoula. You can find out more information by going to MissoulaEvents.net. I'm only talking fast because I want to get this over with. All right, so <laughs> uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot going on, so take care.